What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So, Templin Institute Orcs. This is the video I'm going to be watching today. I think it was last week I watched the Imperium of Man. So I'm gonna continue this Warhammer 40k theme with the Orcs. So, without further ado, let's go. Hmm. Here we go. In the grim darkness of the 41st millennium, there is only war. Each day on a million worlds, armies clash hmm. in an eternity yeah. of carnage and slaughter to the laughter One of thirsty worlds. gods. Across the galaxy, disparate forces muster their fleets in the grim hope that one day, victory might be claimed for the Emperor, the ruinous powers, the greater good, or a thousand other lost causes. Most fail to realize that the universe in which they exist will not suffer any lasting triumph. Another day's survival is all that can be achieved. In this galaxy hostile to every form of civilization, <laughs> only one has managed to not only endure, but thrive. They are the most successful race encountered by man, Whoa. seemingly built for Didn't war in every aspect. They are crude, savage, and possess only a low cunning. But while the great <laughs> works of races a thousand times a more cunning. advanced lay in ruins, the ramshackle designs of the orcs thunder onward. Orc physiology is fascinating, Wait. terrifying, and contradictory in equal measure. They exist as a complex interweaving of two symbiotic organisms that somehow have been genetically linked. Whoa, One strain is akin to any number of terrestrial animals found across the galaxy, while the other is a type of fungus, which prevails throughout an individual orc's bloodstream and skin. The animalistic component of their biology carries the genetic information for an orc's subspecies, while the fungus seems to possess the genetic information of the entire race. This latter aspect exhibits Wait. many other curious properties, including some kind of ingrained genetic memory or knowledge, a type of biosynthesis, a latent psychic ability, and the capacity to quickly recover from injury. Their ability to withstand tremendous punishment is the defining characteristic of the orc race. They feel surprisingly little pain, even when horrifically injured, and can recover from nearly any type of wound. Orcs that have been literally cut apart have been known to survive when stitched back together, Wait. and beheaded orcs, whose heads were then attached back on their own or another's body, have been able to fully recover as well. <laughs> While any other species would weaken or tire when subjected to constant physical harm over a prolonged period of time, the opposite appears true for the orcs. They can survive grievous wounds with little apparent long-term consequences, save some superficial scarring, and instead seem to develop physically the more damage they are able to endure. The average orc stands much taller than a man, although their typical hunched stance makes this not readily apparent. Orcs will grow all their lives, and a particularly skillful orc will continue to become larger and stronger until they are beaten or killed. Grow all their lives. Orc reproduction <laughs> remains barely understood, but revolves around a kind of fungal spore. If left undisturbed, entirely self-sufficient communities of orcs can arise from these spores years or even Ooh. decades after their predecessors were defeated or that. driven away. Like the extragalactic so tyranids, no, the orcoid no race orcs. resembles an ecosystem composed of various subspecies arranged in a brutal hierarchy. <laughs> Colloquially, smalls. these component species are referred to as greenskins. Makes sense. The first okay. and least complex form of orc life to gestate are squigs. Squigs are themselves comprised of various subtypes used by higher forms of orc life for squigs. nearly every purpose. Oil squigs secrete a viscous black lubricant used to keep orc machinery functioning. <laughs> Mending squigs can be used to suture limbs back in place, while face biter squigs are little more than ravenous drooling mouths on <clears throat> legs and kept by orc warlords as a symbol of status. Other forms of squig life include parasite hunting squigs, bag squigs, and the rare and bizarre squig pipe utilized as a musical instrument. The most common squig is the Eaton squig, a limbless Forget bagpipe. Squig pipe. Blob that feeds on orc refuse, okay. which is in turn consumed by higher orc species. Feared above all is the squigoth, 
which range in size from that of a main battle tank to the titans used by the Collegia Titanica. Oui. Next to emerge are snotlings, far too scrawny and weak to bear weapons and lacking the violent tendencies of their larger brethren, snotlings instead cultivate the large patches of fungi that spread wherever orcs multiply. They provide food, drink, and medicine to the orc race, and possess a natural affinity for squigs, which they raise and then train. In battle, a snotling's Ooh. only use is that of ammunition, Never. fired from a cruel device known as the shock attack gun. Immediately above the snotlings in the greenskin hierarchy are the Gretchen, or Grots. Of all the orc subspecies, they display the greatest capacity for cunning. They are fast learners and quick to spot an opportunity or weakness. Within any orc tribe, most serve as laborers, scouts, thieves, or even assassins. The Gretchen's instinct for self-preservation borders on a rudimentary sixth sense, although this is often not enough to prevent them from being forced into serving as living shields, minesweepers, or emergency rations. The above- Did I hear that right? Oh, emergency rations. Average intelligence of the Gretchen has led to the emergence of an underground economy within their normally orc-dominated society. Many Gretchen operate their own black market businesses, selling fungus beer, roasted squigs, or gambling months. enterprises. Fungus beer. The level of sophistication present in these enterprises is almost unknown elsewhere in the Greenskin civilization, and enables the Gretchen to enjoy relatively comfortable lives while still existing as slaves to their larger masters. These subspecies endure a symbiotic relationship with their orc overseers, Ooh. trading menial tasks in exchange for protection. Within the orcs themselves, the social hierarchy is straightforward <laughs> and brutal. Yep. They will instinctively obey those larger than themselves, and while some might rise to prominence through cunning or deception, most seize power and retain it through the application of brute force. At the head of every orc horde is a war boss or warlord, typically the biggest and meanest of his kind, who has risen through the ranks to primacy by winning battles and killing any other challengers. First and foremost a powerful warrior, the war boss will hold absolute authority in his tribe or war band. The decisions of the war boss are enforced by a crude ruling caste of orcs known as knobs. A type of nobility amongst the orcs by the loosest definition of the word, the knobs have earned a position of prominence due to their greater than average size and strength. All others in an orc tribe are referred to as boys. Hmm. Depending on their specialty in combat, they may be known as slugaboys, shootaboys, ardboys, Wild boys or fly boys. <laughs> While any orc fly intelligent boys. enough to recognize Wild which boys. part of a grenade is thrown once the pin is removed is known as a stick bomber. A cast of specialists also exists within the boys, orcs who have been born with specific information programmed into their minds that are released once they reach maturity. What? These so called odd boys include pain boys or mad docs who use their stabby bits as medical tools. The crude bionics that are sometimes implanted in higher-ranking orc are the work of pain boys, <laughs> although their work in this area has the tendency to explode without warning. Yeah. Psychers too exist within the orc Whoa, race, psychers. referred to as weird boys. weird boys. Unlike those in other races, these weird boys draw upon the innate psychic potential of the orc species itself, rather than the energies of the warp. This type of psychic power has its own dangers, however, should a weird boy soak up too much of this energy, his head may explode, and the resulting backlash also explode the heads of any orcs nearby. Mech boys, or mechaniacs, serve as engineers and technicians who build all the weapons, vehicles, and other technology used by the orc race. Like every other advanced process associated with the greenskins, their work is notorious for suddenly exploding. Hmm. Orc technology is one of the least understood facets of their civilization. It is almost always ramshackle and slapped together, yet functions as well or better than anything comparable within other species. The impossible nature of Orc technology is believed to be a result of their latent psychic powers. If enough Orcs believe something is true, 
it will actually become so, brought into existence through pure will. Whoa. As okay. such, orc rockets painted yellow Taking create bigger effect. explosions, so orc level. vehicles painted red will go faster, and orc guns are often nothing more than a box with bolts and bits of metal in it. Mad. This technology, such as it is, is the result of a constant stream of poorly thought out experimentation and attempts to constantly outdo the competition. It is usually as deadly to its operators as to the enemy, and countless orcs have died <coughs> in the pursuit of building the biggest, fastest, or meanest weaponry. This <laughs> simplistic Look and brutal that. approach is reflected in Max. every aspect of what they call culture. Yeah, Questions regarding the nature of the universe that have led entire civilizations to corruption and ruin never occur to orcs in the first place. They have but one philosophy, might makes right, and not one orc has ever doubted this hmm. for a single moment. This unshakable self-belief is likely the most dangerous quality of the orcs. For them, the universe is a very simple and straightforward Ooh. place, free of the angst and like worry that. that plagues most Ooh, other races. Like Orcs have little recognition for concepts like fate or destiny, and are not frustrated when their plans fail. Instead, they just try again, yep, usually in a different way after forgetting how they attempted it the first time. Never does an orc reflect on their own weakness, instead making remarkable progress through bloody trial and error. As long as an orc has someone to fight, someone bigger to tell him who to kill next, and someone smaller to abuse, he will know contentment. War and killing are their only real motivation, the one exception being the desire to possess even bigger and louder weapons or vehicles. Orcs are almost always engaged in a torrent of bloodshed and mindless violence, sometimes against the other races of the galaxy, but typically amongst themselves. Usually these conflicts are smaller scale or localized, and never develop beyond random outbursts of violence and looting. Sometimes, however, should a particularly skilled war boss achieve a string of successes, orcs will flock to his banner to share in his victories. Once this orc population reaches a form of critical mass, a wog might be declared. Whoa. Part military campaign and part migration, a wog is a war on an apocalyptic scale. Orcs beyond counting swarm from one continent to the next, and eventually from world to world. As tales of the wog spread, more orc clans will rush to join, while any potential challengers are either defeated and their clan subsumed, or they will take control of the wog themselves. As this campaign gains more and more momentum, the disparate clans within grow more unified until they represent an unstoppable force on the galactic stage. These wogs rarely possess any Wogs. clear objective, hmm. seeking only to unleash as much carnage as possible no across the universe. That's kill. Within enough. orc culture, a wog is the ultimate expression of their twin gods, Gork, who is brutal but cunning, and Mork, who is cunning but brutal. While they may okay. seem identical to outsiders, Gork is said to be the god of clobbering, smashing, and killing, okay. while Mork is the god of clobbering, smashing, and killing, while an enemy's back is turned. Orcs exist in every corner of the universe, and there is no environment too extreme for them to not only survive, but flourish. They have been discovered on toxic death planets, depressurized orbital platforms, drifting ice flows, irradiated asteroid fields, inside corrosive swamps, or on lightless nightmare worlds seething with horrific predators. Oy. Even in the bombed out remains of planets subjected to exterminatus, orcs can sometimes be found, and there are rumors of orc enclaves hidden within the Eye of Terror itself. These holdings vary sure. from pirate outposts that prey on merchant shipping to system-spanning orc empires wow. inhabited Cut by that. tens of trillions of greenskins. These are normally divided into clans and tribes. Clans are massive groups of orcs who share an enduring philosophical viewpoint on greenskin life, while tribes are much less stable, constantly breaking apart and reforming. A single tribe might include orcs from many different clans, but for the most part, an individual orc's allegiance is to his war boss above his clan. 
While it can be difficult to distinguish all the orc clans, hmm. generally there are six that are truly widespread and found in almost every tribe in the galaxy. The Bad Moons, Blood Axes, Death Skulls, Evil Suns, Goths, and Snake Bites. Snake Bites. <laughs> it is the dream of every aspirant war boss to one day unite the clans and tribes and usher in an even greater era of slaughter across the galaxy. Many have come close. Clawjaw, the mighty mangler of Bork, Tuska, the demon killer, Snagrod, the arch arsonist, and Nazdrag Ugg Erdgrub. Above them all, however, is the self-proclaimed Prophet of the Wog, known to the Imperium as the Beast of Armageddon, oh, Gazgul Mag Uruk Thraka. Oh, the single most influential orc in the galaxy, Gazgul Thraka believes himself to be the instrument of Gork and Mork, destined to lead the greatest Wog of all time. This is, in part, due to the work of Mad Dog Grotznik, whose cybernetic enhancements have supposedly allowed Thraka to speak to the great green gods of the orcs directly. Again and again, Gazkul has unleashed his followers against the Imperium of Man, or come to the aid of the Octarius Empire in their fight against the Tyranids. But as the time of ending approaches and the great rift of chaos spreads across the galaxy, it is clear that Gazgul Thraka has his sights on a higher calling. Across every orc clan and tribe, <laughs> rumors abound that Gazgul Ooh. will soon proclaim the Ragnarok, a time when every orc shall rise up to conquer the galaxy. Okay. In untold numbers, wow. orcs have already started their migration towards the key battles of the Great Wag, and should Ragnarok finally be declared, there may be no force in the galaxy strong enough to withstand it. Okay. Okay, ending it like that as well. Okay. That is... That is the end. Well, let me start off by saying this. This video is about 18 minutes long. And the amount of content, the amount of stuff I've learned about Orcs in 18 minutes is... Yeah, yeah. The most I think I could probably learn about Orcs in 18 minutes. Really good. So the first thing I actually will say about this is to summarize Orcs, at least for me, it seems like it's simple. Keep things simple because if you keep things simple, it usually works. Don't overcomplicate it. And that's kind of their whole motto. They keep things simple. And that's why I think they should mention there that they're the most successful out of all the races. And then I like how I went through the hierarchy as well of every single type of Orc from the lowest rank all the way to the top. And it mentioned this guy called, I forgot what he's called, something of Armageddon, the Beast of Armageddon, which is the main guy from the Orcs as well. So that guy's obviously at the top. But I like how I broke it down, went for every single step. And also for someone like myself who doesn't know too much about Warhammer 40k, this was a really good introduction as well. So yeah, I think I'll leave it here today, guys, in this one. Um, hopefully you enjoyed my thoughts and reactions to this video. And if you did, feel free to let me know. Feel free to like, comment, and maybe also subscribe for more content like this. And I will see you guys in the next one.